Let the peace, love, and blessing of the Almighty God be upon the entire world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The last commandment. What you sow is what you reap. Everlasting gospel delivered to the entire world by the Holy Spirit of Truth, leader Lumba Lumba, Buddha supernatural teacher. First lesson, Second Timothy chapter three, verse thirteen. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Second lesson. Colossians chapter 3 verses 23 to 25 and whosoever and whatsoever ye do do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance for ye serve the Lord Christ but he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done, and there is no respecter of persons. Golden text, Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 to 8. Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh, shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth of the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. The law of retribution, murders, murderers, dupes, armed robbers, thieves, fornicators, adulterers, the wicked, arrogant and saucy ones, gossips, prostitutes, liars, quick-tempered, and all categories of men should listen with rapt attention because something serious is about to happen. I want you to know that giving is synonymous with receiving. We are now harvesting all what we sowed for there is nothing we do without receiving our due recompense. I am not saying that your father, mother, brother or sister will receive your reward. You will receive your reward personally, both good and bad as the case may be. If you sowed bad seeds, same shall you reap. Hence, Whatever happens to you is the compensation for your deeds. You will say, I am very regular in church, yet I am being afflicted. And I ask, have you ever done something good and befitting? You cannot reap what you did not sow. You keep saying that you cannot abstain from sin because you are not Christ that you are only flesh and blood be aware that if you are inclined to the flesh you will perish and if you are committed to the spirit you will reap eternal life to you deceivers and dupes are you not aware that if you con somebody and 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 obtain 20 naira that another person will do the same or even worse to you? If you deceive another person and elope with his wife, the same recompense would you receive. If you tell one lie against somebody, another person will tell five lies against you. So brethren, whatever evil somebody speaks of you, do not respond because some other person will speak even worse evil of him or her, else you will share in the ill fate that is befalling the worldly people presently. That is the law of retribution. Mission accomplished. The lesson denotes the fulfillment of all the scriptures which means that I have accomplished my work. So take note 
because we have finally come to our birthing point. This is the last of the scriptures. Let our first lesson be re-examined. First lesson, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 13. But evil men and seducers shall walk worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Murderers, tricksters, con artists, liars, dupes, thieves, and robbers. Have you heard what is being read? If you dupe somebody of 20 naira and another person dupes you of 40, what is your gain? You are granted loan in a bank to help you finance a business, but you refuse to repay the loan. At the same time, you have contracted somebody to build a house for you, but after building that house, he claims it to himself. What is your gain? Or if you grant another person a loan and he refuses to pay you back, what is your reward? Know from now that there is no evil committed which reward you will not receive irrespective of prayers and fasting or your charitable tendencies. Illustration. For instance, there was a young man who seduced his father's wife and the father summoned him before a village council. According to the norms and values of this village, he was to pay a specified fine for that offense. There was one old man in that village who, on hearing the case and the penalty for the young man, was to pay interfering. He saw no reason the young man should be penalized. According to him, the young man committed no offense because he was simply taking after the father's precedence that also had seduced his father's wife. At this point, the case ended itself as people immediately scattered and went back to their houses. They quickly restored, they quickly reasoned with that old man. So the message here is that for anything you do, you will be rewarded in your own coin. Brethren, you are aware that, what, that whenever I cite instances, I make them three. Here is another one. There was a certain man in a certain village who had a son. This man took ill and was taken to all the hospital both orthodox and native but to no avail at a point the son was fed up and discouraged he now tricked the father saying that he was taking him to another town to meet another specialist whom he was sure would cure him of the sickness he drove the father in his car to a very remote village and into a forest. There he dumped him. When he got home, people asked him, Where is your father? He lied that he was being hospitalized. As he grew up, he picked a wife and begot a son. At his old age, he developed the same sickness of his father. As it were, his son smuggled and took him to almost every hospital of, rep of repute, including native homes, but to no avail until he was fed up. This son deceived him that he was taking him to a specialist hospital in another town and drove him in his car to exactly the forest 
and spot he dumped his father. As he was about to, to go back, the father called him saying, My son, come, I have something to tell you. I am not saying that you should take me back or leave me here, but I want to tell you a story so that the curse will leave our family. Because if you leave me here, your son will also bring you here and so on from generation to generation. I want to tell you this story. This place you have dumped me was my father's grave. He had the same sickness I am having and all the hospitals you have taken me to. I had taken him to. Everything you get, everything you have gone through, I had also gone through with my father. Therefore, I want this curse to stop in our family because if you leave me here, it will go on unabated. Your son will bring you here. So, beloved brethren, when the son heard that confession, he took him back home and eventually he recovered. Realize, therefore, that whatever you do to somebody, another person will do same to you. Let the second lesson be read. Second lesson, Colossians chapter 3 verses 23 to 25. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Jesus. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done, and there is no respect of persons. Brethren, know that there is nothing that is done in the world today that has never been done before, and there is nothing in particular that is done to you that has never been done but right now the spirit of deceit has been taken away from you such things should end now because this lesson marks my last advice to you register this lesson in your memory punish publish and disseminate for others to read without discrimination. If they like, they take, and if they do not like, it is their business. For anybody who derails from the truth is perished from this generation and generations to come. Is it not baffling that from the time of Adam we are still prey to offensive styles and thus Inheriting problems? This is the last injunction I am giving to you. If you do not practice it, you will have to suffer for it. Personally, since I was born, I have not associated with anybody who is of the flesh because I know the repercussions of it. I know also that right from the foundation of the world there is not one honest person. We are not truthful. A child is not truthful to the parents. The husband is not truthful to the wife. A brother is not truthful to a sister. Friends are not truthful to friends. Kin, kit and kin. The whites, the blacks are not truthful and nobody is truthful. But remember that every evil you commit shall find you out. You must pay for it. If you did not know, know it now. Even if you go to the sky, the abyss or ocean to perpetrate evil, you will pay for it because the scripture stipulates that your sin 
shall find you out. If you do not adhere to this instruction till eternity, you are doomed. Brethren, I do not intend to belabor you, but know that God is a respecter of no person. If you do not forgive, you will not be forgiven, and any sin you commit lives with you. And whatever you do unto others will be done unto you. Take a cue from the whites. They are truthful. Reverence, reference here is made to the late King George of England. He had three children, two males and one female. When he died, the first son was called upon to inherit his throne, but he declined and ran away to Germany. That throne was vacant until the second son came of age and then he inherited it. He ruled and later died. The question I am asking is, were there no other men in England when this throne was vacant? There were men, but nobody struggled for that position. If it were in Africa, heads would have rolled between greedy aspirants. But there, the whites will rather preserve it for the family with the bona fide and exclusive right irrespective of the time somebody would emerge. In Africa, some greedy prominent men would have gone there and offer money to take over the position and rob that family of their right. It is the struggle for power and position that claim the lives of many people in Africa. If it is not the struggle for position, it is the struggle for the acquisition of land. My advice to you therefore is that if you are in possession of somebody's land, quietly relinquish it to the owner until it please him to dash it to you. Any other thing you are keeping, hand it over because anything you obtain by force or out of your influence will be collected from you by a more powerful and influential person. If you capitalize on one's weak position or limited power to hurt him or her, another person will do the same to you. Therefore, anything we embark on, we should do it with a truthful kind, merciful and pure art, so that we may not regret at last, because God is a respecter of no persons. That is why it is often said that as far as you cannot forgive your brethren for his wrong, God too cannot forgive your sin, because he is the chief judge. You are familiar with the story of one master who was owed 10,000 pounds by one of his servants and when he asked for it, the servant, the servant prostrated on the ground pleading that he did not have the money yet. The master had mercy on him and forgave him and forgive him of, and forgave him of the debt but as soon as this servant got to the street he saw somebody who owed him only 100 pennies he held the person on the shirt and said until this debt was paid he would not be released in spite of the person's persuasions that he had not the money as yet, he refused to let him go. On seeing the multitude, on seeing the attitude of this man with his debtor, 
the other servants of the rich man went and reported him to their master saying that the debtor whom he had just pardoned was holding another debtor of his ransom. The rich man ordered that he be brought immediately before him. He asked him, you owed me 10,000 pounds and I forgave you. Why then could you not pardon another person? He ordered him to be locked up in prison until he paid his debt. The question is, how is he going to repay the loan? Had he pardoned his debtor, would he have been involved in such a problem? That is what you all are doing today. But this is the last advice and if you do not heed it, you will have yourself to blame. Let our golden text be read again. Golden text, Galatians chapter 6 verses 6 to 8. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall reap of Shall, shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that sweat of the spirit shall of the spirit reap everlasting life. Brethren, do not blame your mother, father, brother, sister, friend, relative, child, or any other person. Let the blame be on you because you are the architect of your faith. Any good thing you do will accompany you and any evil you commit lives with you. You are rewarded according to your deeds. Even if you live for 1000 years and you continue to double in evil, corruption shall be your lot all the days of your life. If you do good, your days will be glorious. The scripture has already stipulated that deceivers will equally be deceived. Therefore, for everything you do, do it faithfully and with a pure heart. Do it as if you are doing it unto God, because in due season you shall receive your reward. If you perpetrate evil, your reward will equally not be in doubt. Why do you, why you do not receive anything good is because of your evil ways. Do you know why our Lord Jesus Christ was able to open this seal spoken of in the Bible? And do you know why it is said that those who believe in him have everlasting life? The reason is that he is the only truthful and righteous person. He believes in his Father and does only his will. Besides, he voluntarily shed his blood for our salvation. Consequently, we are now walking majestically without fear. And through him, the kingdom of God is here on earth. As our last commandment, I say, do unto others what you wish others to do to you. Brethren, a word is sufficient unto the wise. Let those who have ears hear what the Holy Spirit has imparted to the whole world. May God bless his holy words. Amen. End of quote. Peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father.